We know that Madam Web announced shortly after the Marvel's failure, that first trailer came out, just when everybody thought we were done with cringe girl boss team up superhero movies. Sony says, but wait, what about this? It's going to be a box office disaster, tracking to get less than $30 million opening weekend, even over a very long holiday opening weekend. But something interesting has happened when it comes to Dakota Johnson, the star of this. We talked about it a few weeks ago. And after that trailer came out, she actually like fired her agency and shifted agencies, mm -hmm. probably because she got tricked into thinking this was an MCU movie. But throughout the entire, the entire interviews and the PR tour that she's been going on, a lot of things have been popping up because it just sounds like she doesn't give a fuck, to be honest with you. Dakota Johnson's Madam Web press tour is one for the books. Johnson seems to be less than thrilled with Madam Web, and we love it. And really what happened a couple days ago is she put out this big thing where she's just shitting all over Hollywood about how they're, go they're going about making movies, how nobody's willing to take risks, and just quite frankly, making an all-female superhero movie that looks like a CW show. That's about the riskiest thing you can do in Hollywood, just saying. But it echoed some thoughts I heard the other day from someone like Matt Damon. I, I wanted to kind of connect these. But this is her talking about an independent movie that she did. We made a movie called Daddy-O that was sold to Sony Classics, which is amazing, but it took a lot of fighting to get that made. People are just so afraid, and I'm like, why? What's going to happen if you do something brave? It feels like nobody knows what to do and everyone is afraid. That's what it feels like. Everyone who makes decisions is afraid. They want to do the safe thing and the safe thing is really boring. Talking about Hollywood. People run the streaming platforms, don't trust creative people or artists to know what's going to work. And that's just going to make us implode. It's really heartbreaking. It's just fucking so hard. It's so hard to get anything made. All the stuff I mentioned making is really different. It's unique moving forward, whatever it is. And this is following her kind of shitting on Madam Web in general, shitting on the industry, shitting on Hollywood. Wow. Yeah, it, like it really feels like I feel like she doesn't care because she knows this movie is a disaster and is coming out and saying all these things because she knows all the bad PR that it's going to get. That's what it feels like to me. You said this, uh, and again, I have not been following the Madam Web stuff at all, except for when you talk about it here. But you like you had talked about how when she first got involved with this, it sounded like she thought she was going to be in like the MCU. She you tagged know? Marvel yeah. Studios on the Instagram mm -hmm. post. Marvel yep. Studios is not involved in this at all. She probably yeah. thought she was going mainline yeah. MCU. And so when she found out, that's when the agent, you know, got fired and all that. And so now she's just like, what the fuck have I gotten into? And yeah, she's gone full on like, Basically, she should just start a YouTube channel, yeah. uh, put some screen mask JWs in a thumbnail and start talking about it. And you'd probably get a lot more traction that way. But well, yeah, this is out, it'll probably help viewership, too. That will help substantially. That will help I, substantially. That's what I've learned. When I heard her talking about this, how people are afraid to do stuff, how it seems like the streaming service have really affected so much shit. It reminded me of something I saw a couple days ago, and this is Matt Damon clip. For all the people who think it's bullshit when we talk about movies are losing money at the box office and what it takes to actually make a profit and all this shit, Matt Damon breaks a lot of this down and talks about how streaming's destroyed movies because DVDs are no longer a thing, which I think is interesting. A scenario lots of viewers can relate to is, is sitting on the couch on a Friday night, going through the streaming services, cycling through the movies and, and thinking to themselves, they're not making movies for me anymore. As somebody who's been intimately involved in movie making for 30 years, what are the macro Hollywood conditions behind that sentiment? Well, so what happened was um, the DVD was a huge part of our business, of our revenue stream. And it. technology has just made. I feel like he's made this point before. I, I don't I think this is like, like I don't think this is like a new thing. I think it's a fairly old clip. But yeah. Okay, okay, because I feel like he specifically, Matt Damon, has made this point. It might be this clip, but okay, I just wanted to point that out. Go ahead. Exactly. I don't know how new this is, but I saw it floating around and it just reminded me like we talk about this a lot, how the streaming services they they basically killed themselves by eliminating physical media and DVDs and everything now. Yep. Made that uh obsolete. And so the movies that that we used to make you could afford to not make all of your money when it played in the theater because you knew you had the DVD coming behind the release. And six months later, you'd get all, you know, a whole nother chunk. It would be like reopening the movie almost. And when that went away, that changed the type of movies that we could make. I did this movie behind the candelabra when I talked to a studio executive who explained it was a $25 million movie. I would have to put that much into print and advertising, right? To, to market it, um, what we call p &A. So I'd have to put that in p &A. So now I'm in $50 million. I have to split everything I get with the exhibitor, right? The people who own the movie theaters. So 
I would have to make a hundred million dollars before I got into profit. And and the idea of making a hundred million dollars on a story about like this love affair between these two people. Yeah, I love everyone in the movie, but I, it's a, that's a, that's suddenly a massive gamble in a way that it wasn't in the 1990s when they were making all those kind of movies, the kind of movies that I loved and and the kind of movies that were my bread and butter. Very well said. And that's kind of what we talk about a lot. People, whenever we break down these numbers and people are like, no, there's no way. Look, it made $200 million at the mm-hmm. box all of a sudden, a $200 million, but that's not how it fucking works. Like he just broke down the estimate for a normal $25 million movie, $25 million budget, another $25 million on advertising. When, by the way, the theaters get half the fucking money. So for a $25 million movie, you have to hit $100 million before you start actually breaking even. Yep. And now without DVDs, without any of this stuff, it's different. And I think that's kind of connecting to what she's talking about, too, with the streaming services and everything. It's completely fucked up all of Hollywood. It has. And I mean, it's just a common sense approach. It's all it is. Like, all we're doing is taking things for what it is. And you can't just take things at face value. You have to look at it from a common sense standpoint. And Hollywood, we all know, we grew up on the DVD, Blu-ray, VHS kind of era. You know what I mean? That was a massive business. An incredible business that made them a lot of money. So there were movies that me and you and many people in this audience, we loved the sequels to those movies. Guess yeah. what? Those sequels would have never happened in, in some cases if it wasn't for the success that the the individual movie, the first movie got on VHS or Blu-ray or DVD. The Matrix, I think. Yes. The Matrix is one of those movies. Like yes. That's the only reason that we got more after that. Yep. Which, I mean, there's yes, so some people would argue movie. if they wanted more, you know, if it ended up being a good thing or not. But like a lot of movies like that found life outside. And that's right. just not the case anymore. And it doesn't mean that the streaming stuff is just inherently a bad thing. It's the fact that Hollywood is a trend based business so they will jump on whatever trend is happening because that's just what they do even if it's going to them the creative standpoint we've seen it a thousand times where they jump onto trends so they all jumped onto the streaming stuff because netflix mastered it netflix did a wonderful job and it wasn't because netflix was creating new ips and ryan's talked about this a thousand times it was because they basically monopolized like all of these old shows uh, on their platform that you could go back and watch, you know, shows that you were familiar with. And then it would populate some new stuff too. So they were giving you some new stuff, but it was it was because of all the old stuff that they were bringing, the, the entire series and things like that. Hollywood sees all of this and they just go, oh, wow, well, let me start a streaming service. And none of them are making money right now. None of them. And it's completely changed and I think hurt the industry overall in a massive way. 